Let's talk about some of the most common inputs wired up to some of the most common controllers and modules we have. So in the example I have here, I've got an analog sensor. The given here is that this analog sensor is a remotely powered sensor. So the sensor itself can be a, a outdoor dew point, an indoor dew point. It could be a refrigerant leak detect sensor, or it could be a CO2 sensor. Those are the most common that are remotely powered. The modules we're going to talk about today will be the XEM 20 r which is actually an executive controller, the MIN-IO, and the IOM2. Now the IOM2 in this reference is also the same as the original IOM. It's also the same as the SAVI and the executive controller, also known as the EC. So again, this sensor has its power from a transformer somewhere else. And it won't use the power from the Novar modules, hence it's called a remote-powered sensor. So in this configuration, it is polarity sensitive. We do have to have the proper power to the proper wire. And we'll usually use a Novar blue wire for this. And inside the Novar blue is a black wire and a white wire. So here I'll use a black marker for the black wire. And in this case, I'm going to have to use a red marker for the white wire for obvious reasons here. So on the IOM2, we know the positive terminal is a 24 volt DC power source. Since this sensor has already got its power from some other transformer, we do not want to use that terminal block. It will uh, not operate that uh, analog sensor very well. So what we want to do is we want to run the Novar white wire from that analog output. It could be terminal signal out. It could just be called output. could be called refrigerant out. Whichever the case that terminal is named, it's the signal coming back to our controller. We'll use the Novar white wire and go to the negative terminal on this uh, IOM2. Now this is a DC signal, so we need to have a reference on this DC signal. So from that sensor, we'll have a GND or a ground or a common terminal. And we're going to connect that to the IOM2's terminal 47. Now right next to it, terminal 48 is also the earth ground. And 47 is the common terminal for all the sensors that are remotely powered at this case. I like to keep them separate. 47 for all the sensors, 48 for the ground of the IOM2 itself. We come down here to the MIN-IO. Same scenario, this sensor is remotely powered. So the first terminal we check off that we do not want to use is the source. The source terminal is a 24 volt DC power source. Obviously, we don't want that. That sensor has its own transformer. So we'll use the Novar white wire again from that sensor's output terminal. And that's going to go to your input terminal here. Same scenario again. This is a DC signal. We need a reference on that DC signal. So we'll come from the common or ground terminal of that uh, analog sensor. And that'll go to the ground of the MIN-IO. The one exception with this MIN-IO versus the IOM here is this is more universal inputs. The IOM2, this can only be a 4 to 20 milliamp. Where with the MIN-IO, this can be 4 to 20 milliamp, 0 to 10, or 1 to 5. Here we'll have to move that jumper on each of the six universal inputs. So if it was a 4 to 20 milliamp, we'll put that jumper on I, or 4 to 20. If it was a 0 to 10 or 1 to 5, we'll put that jumper on V for voltage. We go down to the XEM20R, and again, the process of illumination, since that sensor's already got its power from somewhere else, we know we know not want to use the 24V, which is the 24-volt terminal here. So we'll use that Novar white wire again from that sensor signal out. It'll go to the terminal called input to receive that DC signal. But since it's a DC signal, we need that common reference again. So from that sensor's common or GND or ground terminal, we'll use that Novar black wire. And we'll connect that to the ground terminal on that input of the xm 20 r Now with the xm 20 r it's compatible the same with the MIN-IO 4 to 20, 1 to 5, or 0 to 10. It's just here, that's all software selectable, so there's no jumpers for you to move for each independent input. So in this example, it's an analog sensor with the power from remote, so it has its own transformer for every sensor. And this is how we'll hook that up to the XEM20R, the MIN-IO, and the IOM2.